Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Podar. Now today on the show we'll focus on the diagnostic sector which has seen an eventful last few years with many disruptions but now has it reached a juncture when it's lost its mojo or are we really going to see a reincarnation of the sector where deal making will also play a pivotal role that's the question that we are asking let's find out from our expert panel today joining us uh, on CNBC TV 18 are Anmol Ganju the founder and managing partner at uh, Shanika Capital Advisors and Sanjeev uh, Vashishta who is the MD and CEO of Pathkind Diagnostics thank you so much gentlemen for joining us now anmol uh, you know you had predicted long back that uh, the good bull run that we had seen in the valuation of diagnostics uh, companies listed on the exchanges will see a drop in valuation and we have seen exactly that what is your view on the sector and the valuations going from here on hi uh, thanks for having me uh, nisha yes we did highlight a few risks uh, mm-hmm. earlier which were there and which made for a perfect cocktail where valuations won't sustain uh, you know 6 months is a long time a lot of uh, the bad news is in the price yeah uh, however whether we are about to see a gradual tick up in the operating parameters I think there's still some time left, mm. but obviously, uh, you know, a lot of froth, a lot of excesses, a lot of mistakes which investors typically make at the uh, peak of bull cycle, they are clearly behind us. Mm. Um, as investors and as industry participants, you have to be watchful now for opportunities more than risks, uh, which is completely inverse to what the situation was six, seven months back when we made the call that you know things are looking fairly shaky from a valuation standpoint. So from here on, in short. uh you are not you are seeing the valuation stabilize not as bearish as we were 6 months back all right mm. so that's an important uh, comment so sanjeev you from the industry and uh, yes you've been a veteran you've headed srl and uh, now you have a company which uh, you have founded yourself so what do you think are going to be the growth drivers and some of the big disruptions in the sector which makes you bullish about this space So Nisha, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, so I think I just a small caveat here. I somehow don't like the word disruption, and I would rather use the word augmentation. But I think coming straight to the point, uh, see if you look at multiple parameters, whether we talk about uh, the accession to test ratio, how many, uh, you know, how many from sample from one sample, how many tests are being being conducted, or for that matter, how many people have actually given their blood for testing or uh, how many people are actually you know paying the money out of out of their own pocket for the healthcare requirements or even diagnostics so all these things go they they will go in favor of uh, the market really taking a good shape going forward what whatever we have seen over the last few you know uh, years and decades actually the industry has been growing fantastically uh, just that just before covid there was the market went a little sluggish for multiple reasons uh uh while the growth on the volume front was good uh but uh, you know we saw that on the revenue side it was low but if you ask me really you know clearly the fact that government has got tremendous focus on healthcare now the spend of the government which is today 1.3% close to about 1.1.3% 1. of the gdp is bound to go up to about 2.5% in the near foreseeable future and as as alluding to accession to test ratio which means from one sample in our country we carry out about just about just a little under two tests and right if you compare this with you know uh, the advanced economies like um, the the us where this number is 15 so from one sample we conduct at an average 15 tests nhs in england we do about 24 tests emerging economies like uh, you know brazil uh, we do about 10 tests from one sample so it's just a matter of make you know pulling the right levers and if you are able to really uh, convince the people about uh, you know the importance of diagnostics a stitch in time saves nine why it is important to uh, you know do the diagnostics from time to time right it will save a lot of money to so exchequer also yeah. so all this goes in favor of the growth and of course right. the macroeconomic parameters also quite favorable Right uh, so Sanjeev I'll ask you then uh, on to this point uh, you're sounding very bullish but many big players have entered this particular space 
And uh, do you foresee that there will be some cannibalization and consolidation, to put a better word for cannibalization? So, so Nisha, I think there's too much of hyperbole which is created around consolidation. Look at the last 12 years data. Now, there are typically uh, three segments under which the you know, investments are uh, coming in the diagnostic sector. One is the diagnostics chains, whether these are the organized chains, which is whether you know, they are in the, uh, at the national level or the you know, regional level. In FY11, the share of diagnostics chains was about 12% in the overall business. This has moved up to over the last 11 years, it's moved up to about 16% now. Hospitals, which had diagnostic share of 35%, it has moved up to 37%, 2% gain. The standalone labs, which were about 53% 11 years back, are now 47%. So during the last decade plus time, we have only seen movement of 6% from this segment. And this is the most potent you know, segment from where the consolidation can happen. Right. Given the fact that we have 125,000 labs in the country, uh, and these are largely, you know, the, the large section of this is uh, more pop and warm shop. Is it really consolidable is the question you should be asking. Right. So organized sector being 16%, unorganized being the largest, the substantial part. Yeah. So you have to have a wieldy asset to be picked by somebody, uh, you know, uh, who can make some sense out of it. Right. Uh, so Anmol, we have seen some bit of consolidation. The two listed uh, entities have both bought uh, other smaller entities to really increase their reach. So some consolidation has happened. But uh, to my larger question, uh, you know, Tata's have entered this space, Adani has entered this space, Reliance has entered, and even Torrent Pharma and uh, Lupin. So there are many new entrants with many related kind of sectors. Do you think consolidation could be the theme going forward? And is it cons uh, consolidatable? That is a question from Sanjeev. Yeah, so uh, to answer this question, we probably need to take a step back and see how the market structure has evolved. If you look at uh, the top line growth for uh, diagnostic sector in India, it has been around 11 odd percent, give or take a few percentage points. Uh, COVID has been a big accelerator of all the themes that uh, Sanjeev alluded to. You know, uh, as I said earlier in one of your probably shows that, you know, uh, the diagnostic industry moved forward by at least five, six years in that one year yeah. because a lot of uh, critical drivers huh. uh, like home testing, uh, you know, going to establish trusted players and not going to a local vendor, which kind of accelerated you know, this whole theme from mom and pop to establish sources that happened. But we have to bear in mind, and I think Sanjeev also made that point that there's a lot of hyperbole going around. Hmm. Uh, all these buzzwords, disruption, home testing, etc. It is not something that has not happened before. Diagnostics is a very established uh, industry globally. Yes. And the script that we are following in India is very identical to what has happened uh, in the West or, uh, when they were at this point of time in their journey. So, for example, if you look at some of the large players globally, like LabCorp, $21 billion or hmm. Quest, they have also grown as a consequence yeah. of acquisitions. Uh, now, it is going to be a combination of multiple moves. You could have inorganic moves that is largely geographically contiguous. Yes. But when um, players want to have a pan-national kind of an identity, yes. they will have to go and pick up players. So, for example, if you look at LAL, uh, they're now 24% uh, west. That yes. happened only uh, courtesy suburban. Yes. So similarly, if you look at Metropolis, they yes. are around 28% south. That happened courtesy a string of acquisitions like yes. high tech in the south. Yes. So it will have to be a hybrid strategy. There is no one size fits all yeah. in this. And the fact is that uh, we have to bear in mind that the industry requires very little capital to start. Yes. So there is a perception and you know, only time will tell whether what's the right answer to this. There's a perception that we can also go and try our hand. Right? Mm. So there are very low barriers to entry given the yes. low capital requirements. But as experience has shown, that there are huge barriers to uh, scale. Okay, that's a very so, interesting point. So there are yeah. low barriers to entry, but huge barriers to scale. And yes. we have not seen uh, players as fast or be as successful in creating massive scale, yes. which then leads to operating leverage kicking in and a lot of other advantages kicking in yes. as the street valuations were multiplying and as the excitement around six, seven months were applying. Right. So this is, you know, uh, a pause, and I'm sure that industry uh, players like Wishish, Sandeep, uh, will hmm. 
uh, we'll recalibrate and look at whatever the learnings have been in the last six, seven months. Right. So, Sanjeev, uh, to that point, scalability. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Sanjeev, scalability. <laughs> Is that uh, no entry barrier, but scalability, and that will come only with experience and with deep-pocketed players? What do you have to say? Oh, absolutely right. See, that is the usual thought process, but our country is a little different. See, if I tell you that top 20 players in the country only have about 11% of the market share, now, even if you consolidate everybody and create just one mammoth company, that mammoth company would not be even 11% of the total market. So, I mean, the whole thing is, however deep pocket one may have, but the industry, can industry really support that? So my point is that in our, what we have to see is that whether we are capable of creating multiple pies or trying to pounce on the same pie, I think yes. we have to increase the market share. There is yes. a dearth of quality supply of diagnostic services, whatever people may say. Uh, so imagine in a country with 125,000 labs, only 13,000 qualified MD pathologists, MD biochemists and microbiologists. So is anybody thinking about the quality? Right. Uh, out of so many labs, only 1%, 1.5% 1 are recreated at labs. So what I'm saying is, if you have to give the quality, then consolidation may help to a, only but up to a certain extent. You yes. have to do a lot on organically. You have to go deep down to the tier two, tier three towns mm -hmm. where you create nice labs, which can really give the requisite services to the people. Right, Sanjeev, well made uh, that particular point, And that's where expertise of the already existing players probably comes in. So consolidation was one theme that we spoke about. But uh, this particular space has seen a lot of disruptive new ideas in the shape of omni-channel approach as well. We'll uh, slip into a short breather on Big Deal, but we'll come back and discuss more M&A and deal play in the space which have taken place and what is the trend going forward. Stay tuned to Big Deal.